Gender and sex are very similar things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are not exactly the same. writing two groups please prepare for the class two okay write one more then we can discuss yeah write one more Hey. Okay. 
So Pankaj, how, how long we can go for this session? One hour. Yes, yes. Yes, one thirty. Okay, and then when is the next class? Sir, we will have till lunch. Okay. Next class, one thirty. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, see, suppose you're a girl. You know, uh, I I don't think that you face this uh, situation. Uh, in your home, when do you feel that your brother is getting better treated by your parents? When do you feel that? No, but I, 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 I'm not saying that it's happening with you, but many, unfortunately, many girls in our society actually get treated like that, you know, in their house. Uh, they're like, the boys are sent to the private schools, sometimes the girls are sent to the public schools. It is happening. Uh, yeah? It is happening. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, if the girls fall sick, I can wait for one day, two day and see whether it's, you know, uh, uh, getting, getting better without any treatment. But if the boy falls sick, immediately we rush to the hospital. So, these are the indications of... Uh, it's my brother, so I don't feel bad. Uh, but sometimes, see, if you look this type of uh, uh, family practices systematically, uh, then it's a clear indication of gender discrimination, right? The boys and the girls are treated differently, even within the same family. So, do boys get better healthcare than the girls? I have to. This is a qualitative statement, right? Better healthcare. Now, when I will say that you are getting be better healthcare than me. One indicator could be, I am taken to a private or private doctor. Huh? I am not taken to a quack, quack yeah. informal. Yeah. 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 So, so if okay, so if I am taken to a private qualified MBBS, MD, DM doctor, then yeah. same because of that. Suppose you are taken to him. Sorry, M's. Yes, yeah, means that. Okay. Now, uh, yeah. So it's a qualified or high quality healthcare. When I am, yeah, when uh, my parents actually spend more uh, for my, suppose I'm a girl and my parents spend more on healthcare for my brother, or then it's an indication of better healthcare. So one could be that the type of doctor or hospital. This information I have to collect, private versus qualified doctor versus, you know, uh, private hospitals. Then the time lapse since the time lapse in the onset of the symptom. So when the time when my brother falls sick and after how many hours he is taken to the hospital or doctor. So the time lapse is an indicator, and then expenditure how much so this could, these are the indicators of better healthcare right expenditure on doctor or treatment now remember this cannot be supposed just looking at this indicators you cannot tell whether you are getting discriminated you also have to look at the severity of the you know, uh, severity of the illness. So, suppose my brother, like your brother, falls sick with more severe illness, and you fall sick with a less severe illness, and in that case, if your brother is taken to AIMS, and you are taken to a local, doc local doctor, that doesn't mean that you, you know, you, you, you are discriminated, you, you are getting, you know, uh, you are facing the discrimination. So, the severity of the illness is also severity of illness. Another thing is that my parents' economic status, they are how much they can afford. So, the parents' economic status is also important to know. So, 
सो प्रोबेबिलिटी probability that at probability that i am taken to a qualified private doctor this probability must be a function of age sex then economic status of the parents then severity of illness so if so this is one kind of model that can do this estimation is a uh, limited dependent model like mm -hmm. logic model probit model this type of models you can answer this question okay <laughs> come back to the uh, First questions, please go to right. Ah, oh, please. Finally, uh, better. You are okay. Okay. Fine. See, see you later. Right. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So write the write the crucial information that we have to collect from the field. Not. Yeah. You. Yeah. So you have to define what you want. You will have to define. As my friend told, location. Ruler youth, okay. Urban youth. Secondly, who are you? It's me. That means it's me. Yeah. It's from youth considered something. After that, here, I go. Yeah, yeah. Gender. Gender. मेल फीमेल यूथ में भी मेल फीमेल है इसको भी हमको कल्याण करना पड़ेगा सर और क्या हो सकता है सोशियो इकोनॉमिक कंडीशन सोशियो इकोनॉमिक कंडीशन ऑफ यू एंड देन यू आर मिसिंग अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चन भैया कैन आई ज्वाइन यू जस्ट गेट इट प्लीज सर Missing a very important question. We order in a better way. Right now, age, age, gender, gender, religion, caste, then area, ruler, or urban. So what my friend has done, I have divided it into broad categories. Yes. So my friend helped me, and he he has specified it. If no, then either I 
In what you are training? Yes. Institute, you have taken the training. Trainings are on job training, yes. yes. Other training. Other trainings. Training, training. Type of training? <laughs> Some training has on job training. Ah, sorry. Okay, okay. Yeah. Always visit the supervisor. Now you submit the training. So, what kind of training? Urban youth are getting, and what kind of training rural youth? Okay, what training yeah. is selected? It's a point, yeah, it's quite exhaustive. So, thank you. Yeah, thanks to both of you. Now, I will ask one question and just get rid of this question. Uh, in our survey, should we also include the youths who did not get training? Yes, sir. yes, yes. Yes, you're, you're, you're sure about that part. Otherwise, we will not be able to uh, know whether training really made any difference. So we need to have youths who receive training and the youths who did not receive training. Only we can say that training really made any difference for their job prospects in future. Okay. And uh, okay, so this is perfect. Who is coming? Uh, yes. Yeah, this is perfect. Yeah. And why you? Why did you think that uh, religion and caste were important information to us? So, uh, there are uh, certain norms or religious norms. Okay. We can feel disparity between the education level of different religions and in caste also. Whether training uh, makes your job prospect better, why religion and caste matter in that question? No. That, that's also important to ask. Sir, I have a question. Here we have taken the people who are asking for the job, their perspective. What about the people who are providing it? Do we have to consider that also? Uh, in this particular question, no. We only look at the youths. We survey, for example, 1000 uh, young people who are currently employed or unemployed. And we ask about their history, you know. So you ask about the their training history. But you also need to ask about their education. Did you include their education? No. Sometimes, you know, a good education can be a substitute of training. Like, you know, uh, people like did not have a professional training, professional or educational training, but had a good schooling. They probably they also had. So, uh, education should have been included in one of the questions. And it should be sequential, systematic. Yeah, you see, yeah. No, no. When we make the first draft of the question, it will be has the uh, hazard. And then we go through the revision and we take feedback from people. Any draft will be like this first. You know? Whatever comes to our whatever comes to our mind, you just put them together. Class. 
जेंडर वी डोंट नीड टू इंक्लूड राइट बिकॉज वी आर ओनली सो एक्सेप्ट द जेंडर फाइन रिलीजियन कास्ट आई एग्री बिकॉज Uh, yeah, often dropout happens for the uh, uh, making the girl ready for the marriage side. You know, year coffee schooling. Sorry, year coffee schooling. Yeah, year some schooling. Yeah, yeah, year some schooling is fine. Year some. Do you get so class, parents qualification? Do you go to the school every day? Year some schooling. Do you get any scholarship? Yes or no? Uh, now, do you get any scholarship or not? Now remember, this questions. If you are this study, should be the girls who have left education, they should also be included in this study, right? Because otherwise, you you don't get the drop out girls, right? So. Do you get any scholarship? Yes, no. In this question, you have to modify that the girls who dropped out from the schools, whether they are they are even receiving when they dropped out. That's why I am asking. We are talking about it. Other people can be too bayi. Ah, too bayi. Okay, okay, okay. 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 No, dropout is only dropout is only valid for those girls who never enroll. So. Ha uh-huh. so in education sir you see that they make the difference never enroll ever enroll okay never enroll out of the party of the circle okay because the drop out is only meaningful for those who ever enroll yeah so so we are actually this survey will be only covering the ever enrolled girls okay so ever enrolled Uh, again, you have two groups still in the uh, school drop down. Okay, now you have to specify the age because you cannot take you know from seven to seventy years, right? Reasonably, we assume that seven to eighteen years of the age groups where people should be in the education institutions. Uh, people should not drop out before eighteen. Eighteen is the Legal minimum uh, age to join the labor force. So take seven to eighteen, and then scholarship. Yeah, one informations that you have to collect. Uh, not one, maybe some other information like the school environment. You know, like whether the girl was studying in a girls only school or boys school, because then. Uh, uh, There are many questions related to the uh, how much comfort the motivational yeah the girls actually uh, feel at school like you know how and the teachers are parents and family one of them yeah yeah yes. of course parents parents yeah. economic status girls toilet in different countries found that that's very very important you know mm-hmm. presence of girls toilet you know which is clean yeah yeah and uh, another thing is that. Uh, distance to the school, distance to the school, mode of transport, presence of street light. In different country contexts, these are the variables people found. You know, because before designing your survey, you will do a very good review of literature, not only from India, from other countries. You know. Yeah, yeah. So that's why, yeah, yeah. So whether the girl, like, I have, yeah, we have uh, done a survey in Kochi Bihar. Uh, and we found that many girls are not happy because the boys actually tease them. Yeah, 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 yeah. So in a boys' school, they don't feel very comfortable. And again, uh, we found that you know, you know, in Kutch Bihar, there's a uh, tribe called Bodao. Bodao. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, or Bodao. So the 
the community mix in the school is also important. If we have all my classmates belonging from the same community, I feel more comfortable. If there are intermixing and people are not very sensitive to each other's culture, that also creates some kind of you know uneasiness in the social mingling. So these are you know social science is always very complicated and you know you have to keep uh, open minds to understand the uh, complexity of our human behavior. Okay, this is good job. Uh, I think you are uh, fifty percent done with uh, developing your any uh, like some lessons that you should remember for developing the questionnaire. Let's okay. I have got a uh, 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 that I can share with from that didn't work right. That's really so. I have got another version of Stata 40 that I'm going to share after uh, this break, the lunch break. I'll share with Pankaj and I have to download it. Let me show some of the things that I have planned to. So, can you raise that? How, how many of you are not from economics? Okay, so majority are from economics. Okay, okay. Uh, economics, uh, because of their uh, training, they are familiar with the data. Uh, and those those of you who are not from economics, did you have any statistics background? Okay. Any course in statistics? No. First course? Okay. Fine. That doesn't matter. of quantities or numbers and we have to analyze them because there, when there are too many numbers. If there is one number you don't have any problem but often we have too many numbers. So I am giving an example because quantitative quantity or numbers or quantitative analysis is a very part of our daily life. Increase in the price of commodities, inflation, we all are familiar whether we study economics or not, we know about the inflation, the price, is, you know, the, the price level is increasing. Uh, good job, bad job, even if we make qualitative statement, there will be some hidden quantity in our mind. Good job, bad job, how do you, it's a qualitative statement, it's a good job or bad job, but what we have in our mind is some quantities. How much we pay, how much we have to work, what are the other, you know, uh, benefits like the pension, the insurance, you know, the, the leaps, uh, the <coughs> other, what you get, what travel every two years, uh, what is called the NTC or something. Yeah, yeah. So, this, so good student and bad student, it's a qualitative statement, but there will be some quantity in the, in our mind, right? Yeah. So the students who scored good marks is a good student. The student who attended all my classes is a good student. The student, yeah, the student never questions me. Is a good student, right? Yeah. So this is the way we actually make the qualitative impression. So behind every qualitative impression, whether we are conscious or not, there are some quantities, you know. The quality actually comes from the you know, quantity. 
whether we accept or not. Good school, bad school. We say good school, bad school, but think deeply and then you will realize that why you are calling a school good school because uh, the number of first divisions were you know, higher, the number of uh, students who cracked the entrance examinations were more. <laughs> Performance of political parties, that is also quantity. So we can give you know the hundreds of examples. It's all qualitative statement, but <laughs> behind every qualitative statement are some quantities are you know hiding. Okay. Now data, every data has as a data in dictionary they say that data can be a plural or data can be a so, uh, data has a story to tell and our job is to uncover that story and data analysis is a kind of, you know, the modern data analysis uh, which all the firms are doing as a kind of detective work. <coughs> so, data analysis is a kind of detective work which requires three things, common sense, intelligence and there are some quantitative methods. Now, this this thing cannot be taught, first two things, right? Uh, intelligence and common sense cannot be taught, right? And only this part can be taught. This can be uh, uh, only the quantitative methods that you can learn from a class. So, quantitative methods are basically uh, based on statistical theory uh, that we are not going to cover, but we will learn some uh, tools and techniques. So how to know the real world from the quantitative data using the statistical tool is our focus. And you know statistic has its own dictionary. There are many words we, we use in our common conversation, but when you use them in statistics, they have a very clear specific thing. For example, distribution. Distribution has a different meaning in statistics, okay. It's not distribution of Price or distribution of you know books like that. Taste, feet, normal, significance, RSS. That's a funny example. So RSS is residual sum of square. Okay, so don't mix okay, statistics yeah. as its own dictionary. Yeah, so don't mix the English meaning with the statistical meaning. Raw data are organized in rectangular rectangular form. Uh, I am going to show you the example. So data, in an in a Excel sheet, only the borders are missing here. The data will actually look like this. Now there, this is I am showing, I have a sample data of 261 workers. Uh, it was for a primary survey. Uh, my teachers have carried out in early 90s or late, late 80s in Coimbatore. Coimbatore, you know, that in Tamil Nadu, it's a, it's a half of the textile industry, Tilpur and Koyambatu. Um, it's an industrial town. So that time, they did a survey of the, they did a survey of the uh, textile workers. Uh, the data, actual data is very big, but I have taken five variables. And uh, I'm going to, sh I have shared the data with you. So, gender, age, education, wage, and job status. So gender is a categorical variable, right? Male, female, you cannot have any value. Uh, age and wage, they are the numerical variable, right? And job status is again a categorical variable. So basically we have two types of variable, numerical variable and categorical variable. Now, you can easily, it's a common sensical, right? Now they say gender is a categorical variable, education is a categorical variable, job status is a categorical variable. But do you think that education is something different from gender and job status in terms of the nature? So gender is binary. Gender is binary but categorical, two categories. Job status is also binary. Education is not binary, it has got four values like none means illiterate, then upper primary, secondary and above secondary, secondary plus. But look, 
this worker is elder than this worker right ha huh? the worker 4 the worker 3 is elder than this worker because 35 is greater than 29 right <laughs> the worker 3 is earning more than worker 4 right because this is 600 this is 530 Can we make this kind of comparison like more or less for male female? No. Can we say that male is more than female, uh, but female is more than male? We cannot say. Can we say that permanent is better than temporary or per, otherwise be temporary? Can we say that permanent is better than temporary? Is permanent better than temporary? No. That that's the wrong concept. Yeah, because uh, most of the top paid job in the world, they are all temporary job. You know, think yeah. So, <laughs> permanent is a low level equilibrium job. Yeah. So you you only get the job security. All the top executives of the big corporations, they are all temporary workers. They are they are none of them are permanent workers. Look, so there is no order possible between male and female. There is no order possible between. Otherwise, and permanent, but the order is possible here. None, none. Upper primary is above none. Secondary is above upper primary, and secondary plus is above secondary. So this education, though it's a categorical variable, it is a special type of categorical variable. It's called order variable. Now this conceptual distinction is important. because depending upon the type of the variable you have to choose your technique so you cannot if your variable is a numeric variable you choose one kind of technique for analyzing the data if your variable is a categorical variable then you choose another kind of technique and if your variable is a order variable within the categorical variable then you choose another kind of technique so this distinction is important to understand but it's very common sensical you know how you distinguish the data okay so the variables are uh this is the numerical variable like age and weight categorical variable like what type or category is and then ordinal variable so measurement variable categorical variable ordinal variable okay so the type of analytical tools two types of analytical tools to describe the variable one is the numerical summaries we calculate some numbers like mean median mode standard deviation variance inner quartile range or we display the data in the graphical form so either we either we give a table or we give a graph these are the two outputs we can present after our data analysis either we give some numbers or we give some graphs now it's they are not substitute they are not alternative to each other most of the time you have to use them in combination so for certain things you use tables you calculate the numerical summaries and for certain things you actually uh, uh, use the graphs okay so uh frequency distribution it's the starting point of any analysis uh it's we use for the measurement variable it's a lengthy uh grouping is necessary let me let me come back to the data and then i'll show you is it Okay, so this this is state something like data looks like. It's a software, and you can look at the data here. Okay, now we can like the gender. So I type. 
tabulate gender, we get this table. So <coughs> there are 206, 206 male and 55 female. Right. Uh, tabulate age. If I tabulate age, I get such a big table. It's a frequency distribution. Now this type of table doesn't actually help anybody. This type of table doesn't help anybody. It's a long table, so we have to create some. So the uh, I, if I summarize the data, summarize age, we get some statistics like we have 261 observation, like 261 workers. The mean age of the worker, mean you know the arithmetic mean the average average age is 32 years. Standard deviation is 12.12113. Minimum age is 11. Maximum age is 75. So remember, back in 1980s, we used to have child labor. What is, you know, now, now we, it's illegal. Uh, child labor even in the textile industry. There's still, you can find child labor, right? Yeah. yeah. So this is the part of the data. Now, Okay, now we have three variables. We have five variables. What are the variables? We have gender, this worker data that I am going to show you. So we have gender, we have age, we have education, we have wage, then we have job status. Gender is male and female, age is a number, 11 to 70, 75. Education, we have none, main skill literate. Then we have upper primary. We have secondary. Then we have secondary plus. Wage is a number. And job status, we have temporary and permanent. Now instead of permanent, it's written otherwise. Yeah. Now coming back to the types of analysis. Now let's, what is the summarize of which? Mistake of writing So the minimum was 15 rupees to 950. Yeah, this is the range 15 to 950. Now there are three types of analysis we make in a data analysis. One is <coughs> Yes. So univariate analysis. Univariate analysis that we just look at one variable at a time. We just look at one variable at a time and calculate a calculate a some summary. So examines variables one at a time and see how they vary individually. 
So example is that if somebody asks you uh, what is the average wage or average age of the workers, that's an example of univariate analysis. You just calculate the average. Bivariate analysis is that you analyze two variables together. One example is that uh, if you ask a question that do female workers earn lower than the male workers, that's an example of the bivariate analysis because it involves two variables. One is the sex of the workers and one is the wage of the workers. What is the multivariate analysis when you are uh, considering more than two variables together and trying to answer a question. Now in research, all our analysis are multivariate analysis. Okay. There is uh, univariate analysis and the bivariate analysis are just the study. But the real research questions always involve multivariate analysis. So for example, uh, suppose we find that education gives you more income. So as you get more and more educated, your earning increases. You know? Now, does it happen for both the genders? You know, does education give the same premium in earning to the male as well as the female? That that's a that, that's a research question, uh, which involve gender, education, and wage. Now we'll see how to answer these questions. Okay. Okay. Let's let's. Uh, do this. Uh, come back to the data. Yes. Okay. So, what was the first question? Bivariate analysis. That. Uh, what is the average wage? So I I just type summarize wage. Average wage is. 165 rupees. Okay, that's a weekly wage in 1980s. You know, weekly wage in a week, they used to earn 165 rupees. Now, suppose I want to see whether the average wage is uh, uh, higher for the male or the female. So, this is the average wage for all, both males and females together. Let's see them separately. So, summarize. Summarize. Wage if sex oh there is no sex gender gender equal to one so this is one eighty two is the average wage for the male <coughs> summarize wage if gender equal to two yeah. Who is female? So, for male it is one eight one eighty two, and female is one one not one. Now, one question also could be: Is the female workers uh, are the female workers younger than the male workers in the workforce? Like, what is the average age of the male workers or average age of, of the female workers? We do the same thing. For age in any workforce, so what is the average age of the uh, male workers? 32. What is the average age of the female workers? 30. Slightly less. Okay. Now let's see whether education really makes any difference in the earning, right? <laughs> so summarize. Wage if education equal to one. So one forty. So when you are illiterate, then your average earning is one forty. Let's make upper primary. Then your earning is one forty seven, slightly high. When you have secondary, your earning is two forty. When it is secondary, above secondary, you are earning 285. Okay. 
So I can take most of this. Now remember when in the data structure. There is something called histogram. Yeah. This is the proportion of this is the proportion of workers and this is the weight weight state. Okay. And you can see that majority of the proportion of workers they are earning this less and very few proportion earning more. So this graph is called histogram where we measure the proportion of workers along the vertical axis and the variable along the horizontal axis. If you look at our income distribution in any you know poor countries, it's like that. that there are more people, there are more people with less income, there are less people with high income. You know? Most of the variables are give histogram of this set. And this is called positively skewed distribution. This is a distribution. This is called positively skewed. So if I smoothly draw a graph like if we make this bar smaller and smaller and take the middle point and then we can draw a graph like this and this is positively slope this is positively not sorry positively skewed distribution positively skewed distribution means the more observations with low values and very few observations with high values. And just the opposite of this is negative disk So if you find something like this, this is negative disk Can you think about a variable where there are few observations with low values? and most of the observations with high values can you think about any variable of uh, like students of economics must be able to tell any variable which has got positive uh, negative risk distribution all prices in the world huh? uh, few prices in the world capital prices in the world does it vary like yeah, only a few countries are lesser and protected. Most of the countries are high. And there are a few countries where the price is low. Very low. Okay. It's like <coughs> 1.5 degrees in very low. Okay. Any other? other? Income yeah. inequality. Huh? No, no. Income is like positive rescue. There are more people with low income, less people with high income. Income in the world is like that. Ah, so uh, uh, he said oil prices. Any anything else? Huh? Sir? Expenditure? Expenditure? Expenditure on So I'm measuring expenditure on uh, luxury. No. How can that be? Like, there is a more people with a high high expenditure in the world. Yes. This is the see. This is the negatively skewed. I am asking for this. There are more people with high values, less people with low values. It could be people. It could be country. It could be states. It could be anything. More observations with high values. <coughs> More billionaires, more billionaires, 
No, what do you measure? No, yeah. One example could be the life expectancy at birth. Yeah. Now, majority of the countries have, you know, moderately high and moderately moderate life expectancy. The only very few countries in Africa with the low values of life expectancy. So, most of the countries in the world, they have actually reached there. So, more and more countries will find in this region. Very few countries, you know, like which used to be affected by the HIV AIDS, you know, they are still having low life expectancy. So, life expectancy of birth, which is the average uh, uh, life one child born today is expected to live, that is an example of the positive distribution. Now, coming back to our question, so that education, whether education really increases the earning. So, male, female and total. Male plus female. So, one education, we have four categories. Education is a categorical variable and we have got four categories. So, one is none, means illiterate. Then, upper primary, secondary, and secondary class. What is the results we have got? What was that uh, uh, education one? It was 140.93. So, let's take it 141. Uh, next is 147 points, so let's make 148. 214 points. 214? 25. What is your opinion? Is education increasing people's earning? From this learn to upper primary, these are increasing, right? Is it increasing? Yeah, 141 to 148. Okay, but did you observe something? 141 to 148 is not a big jump. So, whether you are illiterate or you are just having a primary education, that doesn't make a big difference. Okay, only big difference happens when you have a secondary and then you have secondary class, above secondary. Okay, so little education and no education doesn't make much difference. Now, so education is giving a premium to the people for earning. Now, is it happening both for the male and female in the same way? Let's take this question. So, we will do the summarize and let's add the gender. Gender equal to 1 and gender equal to 2. So, what is that? 160 and 83. So one 57, 86. 1, 57, 86.
So, what do you think? What is your observation? What is happening for the male and female? Now, what what observations you made from this table? All of you. Number one, education. With more education, people are earning more. That's that's good. Is it happening same for the male and female? No. What difference you are observing? For any any given education level, females always earn less than the males. No? Here, what is the difference? The difference here is, yeah, almost yeah, almost fifty percent, right? Tell me the percentage. Eighty-three by one sixty-five, one sixty. What is that percentage? Almost fifty, yeah. Less than, little less than. What? Fifty one point eight. So fifty two percent. What about eighty six as a percentage of one fifty two? Fifty six point five seven. No, eighty six as a percentage of one fifty seven. Fifty four point seven. No, it will be less than fifty. It will be less than fifty percent, na? Eighty-six as a percentage of one fifty-seven. Sir, one sixty. Eighty-six as a percentage of one fifty-seven. Also, less than fifty, no. Okay. Ah, fine, fine, fine. Yeah, yeah. What? Tell me, fifty. Fifty-five point four. Fifty-five point four. Fifty-five. Okay, fifty-five. Roughly. Yeah. And then, one forty-five as a. Sixty-four point four four. Sixty-four. Then. One eight two. Yeah, so it's always it, it's not changing. So it's almost uh, yeah, it's almost yeah. Sir, you have to get a new sir. Ah, is it normally just to get us? Is it this data is? Uh, skew on which variable? That, uh, like male, female, and no male, female. See, skewness is a con skewness is a concept which can be applied to the numerical variable like age, race. Okay, skewness is not a categorical skewness is not a statistical concept which you can use for a categorical variable. Okay. Yeah. जो हिस्टोग्राम में आप भी दिखाए थे सर वो तो स्क्यू डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन वो तो स्क्यू डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन था दैट वाज या या अगर वो स्क्यू डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन है तो हम किसी कुछ भी रिजल्ट निकालेंगे तो वो तो एफिशिएंट और ऑनलाइन नहीं होगा सर नहीं नहीं ऑनलाइन का तो बात नहीं है मोस्ट ऑफ द सोशियो इकोनॉमिक डेटा मोस्ट ऑफ द सोशियो इकोनॉमिक डेटा आर स्क्यू ओके मोस्ट ऑफ द सोशियो इकोनॉमिक डेटा आर स्क्यू वी आर दैट वाज अ सैंपल Based on simple random sampling. Okay. Now, simple random sampling. If you calculate the mean, mean is a. If you are economics, you know that mean is a actually blue of the like the sample mean is a blue of the population population. So these are these are the sample mean. The point I am trying to make is that from the data you got this table. And what are the observations you can make from this table? Observation number one, that education improves your earning. So more education you are. Point number two, that between no education and upper primary education there is no significant jump. You know, having little education doesn't actually 
give you more earnings. Third, for any given level of education, <coughs> women always earn less than the men. The female female workers always learn, uh, earn less than the male workers for any given level of education. And education educational improvement is not able to bridge this gap in wealth. Okay. Generally, see, illiterate worker I can understand that there's a huge gap between the male and female earnings. But even for the secondary class workers, the workers with the education secondary and above, the gap the gap is actually not not a yeah. Yes. Okay, now this can be nicely shown in a graph. Let me, let me find the graph. Yeah. Yeah. Just give me a uh, Wait a minute, I, I'll, I'll get back. Okay, so the, the 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 questions that you have raised that it's a skewed it's a skewed, skewed distribution. So when some uh, if the variable is skewed, then mean the average or the arithmetic mean is not a good summary measure. You, know? you all of you know that that. I give an example. Suppose six, seven, eight, nine, twenty. What is the average? Average is the seven. Plus nine plus twenty Five. Yeah. Now use your. Yeah. Huh? One to fifty. Five, ten. Ten, 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 not eight. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. See, so average mean is ten. Ten. Mean is ten. So ten is here, right? Now, do you accept this arithmetic mean as a measure of center for this distribution? No, no. It it looks does look like so like you know it, like you. Uh, India's average income will uh, average income will increase just because uh, uh, income for people. Uh, yeah, just uh, because somebody's income yeah. increases, right? So will that be a very good uh, indicator? No. So that's the reason that uh, many socioeconomic uh, distribution we use the median. Now here, what is the median? Median is a. Next reasonable. Median. 
like if this 30 if this 30 becomes 70 india india's income will become 20 okay so suppose this person is uh, somebody like the, the richest persons in, in in the country so we use median median is a when your distribution is skewed median is a better measure so let's check the same value using median so uh, i just i just add a comma and detail uh, sorry I, I have not written details this is detail so this is 120 and this is 47.5 so 120 and 47.5 now this way you can calculate all the median I am just using one Yes, look, sometimes the graphs are more appealing, you know, than the table. What we presented in the table, look, look at the graph. This is the mean income, sorry, this is the mean waste rate and this is the median waste rate. This is the mean waste rate, this is the median waste rate. One thing you can, uh, uh, so, so, no, 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 sorry, this is the mean, sorry. This is the male, this is the female. I have only shown the median, not the mean value. What do you see? <coughs> For, it's the same observation that as education improves, earning, earning increases, right? Earning also improves. Second, for any given level of education, the female earns less than the male. Okay, but look at this. The, the gap instead of coming down is increasing. You know, education should bridge the gap in the earning between the male and female. It, it didn't happen in the textile industry. It's increased. Okay. One another point is also clear that it's almost the same. Having no education and having upper primary education, there is not much, uh, you know, not much change. And look, the increase is, if I connect by a straight line, the increase is more steep for the, more steep for the male and less steep for the, it's like more flat for the, uh, uh, the female worker. So, education made the male workers earn faster, you know, the, the growth of in uh, wage earning was faster for the male workers, but it was slower for the female workers. Okay, so yes. Okay, so if you are ready to spend, uh, learn a new software, like uh, the advantage of learning stata is, yes, sir. it's easy to learn and the biggest advantage now, it is now integrated with Python. Okay, so it is now integrated with Python. Uh, the Stata has Python, so you can use you can use Python get Stata results, and you can use Stata and get get results in the Python format. So, uh, if you are in uh, university departments, you convince your head or your teacher to buy the latest version of the stata and that will really be uh, useful. Do you guess this place? Uh, do you have any idea? Okay, this No. Yeah, it's close to the middle of the It's Kerala. Yeah. 
Okay, so what time will break? Uh, uh, okay, so just five more minutes. So graphical displays. Uh, Okay, let me uh, let me show you one. Let me show you one uh, nice. Uh, so wait. Wage is a numerical variable, and uh, uh, one one comment in Strata gives you all the relevant uh, uh, summary statistics. So, summarize wage detail. Wage if gender equal to one, that means male detail. Okay, so it gives a lot of results. So see, look at the results. So I, I have asked Stata to summarize the wage of the gender one. Gender one is the male. Because gender is coded as one and two. One means male, two is female. And I asked Stata to give the detailed summary measures. So look, there are 206 observations. The mean wage rate is 182.945. The standard deviation is 136.5948. This is the variance. This is the skewness. This is the cartesis. Now, if you spend some time with the statistics uh, uh, book to understand what are they. These are the percentiles. Okay. And these are the smallest, smallest four values. So, among the male, the smallest four values means the, the male workers earning the least wages are 18, 18, 20, 40. And the workers earning the largest, the highest wage rates are 950, 622, 600, 530. Okay. And these are the different, these are the different percentile. Median is 50 percentile, right? Half. So it is. It is 135 point, it is 135 point uh, 2, is it a remote? Yes. Okay. 135.25. Now, uh, there is something, uh, have you, have you come across a concept called outlier yes. uh, yes. in any subject like you know outliers is uh, yeah, the yeah. Big, huh? yeah it's something exceptionally high values or exceptionally low values you know? it's outlier now outlier is part of any data outliers are not the uh, uh, now to put in a general context you know uh, for example uh, take for Take for example, West Bengal. Now, when West Bengal, uh, uh, like, we boast about our education, we cite all the prominent people who have excelled in their careers, right? So they are the outliers. But actually, we should be focusing on the literacy rate, you know, what is the average? Female literacy rate, school dropout, you know, uh, what is the dropout rate, what is the gross enrollment rate. So, uh, any distributions that are outliers, now any distribution should not be judged by outliers, it should be judged by the, uh, judged by the normal, yeah, judged judge by the central tendency. So when we compare the educations, educational 
uh, achievement of two states, for example, West Bengal and, West Bengal and Kerala. Uh, West Bengal may take pride in fighting all big names, but they are all outliers. But if you focus on if you focus the general level of education, you will find that it's always Kerala, which has given you know uh, reasonable education to the maximum number of you know. So that's the contrast between uh, now. There is a uh, very popular, very useful graphical tool that you all must use if you find an appropriate application is the box plot. Have you heard about the box plot? Ah, so there is something. You know what is median? Median is if you have a if you arrange your variable in ascending order or descending order, then the middle middle value is the median. So suppose in this row, if you want to calculate the median wage, sorry median median weight, then we arrange all the weights of everybody in ascending or descending order, and then the middlemost value is the median. Okay. So this is median and this is first quartile, this is third quartile. Now median will distribute, median will divide the distribution between half, right? Now so this becomes one distribution and this becomes another distribution. Now, if you again calculate the median of this half, then this is the first quartile. And again, if you calculate the median of this half, then this is the third quartile. Second quartile is actually median. Okay. So the first quartile, median, and third quartile, they divide the entire distributions into four quarters. You know, 25%, 25%, 25%. Now, this gap, this distance between first quartile and the third quartile is called interquartile range. This is called interquartile range. Now like, like we use the measure variance. Huh? Now mean variance, these are more appropriate when our data is symmetric. You know? But when the data is not symmetric, when the data is actually skewed positively or negatively, then mean and standard deviation or variance, they are no longer good measures of summary. We use interquartile range. We use median. Now there is a graphical tool which actually captures this graphically. So I will just draw that and will, that will close now. So interquartile range calculate No. Out, outliers Outliers will not be here. Outliers will not be here. Outliers will be outliers will be somewhere here. Okay. Interquartile range is from here to here. Okay. Outliers will not come here. Outliers will outliers will lie here somewhere. Outliers Q Q one Q one Q one के पहले और Q three के बाद होगा. ये बीच में नहीं है. ये normal चीज है. This is our normal. This is our normal range. Is the outlier? Outlier? Yeah. Outliers will influence the mean. Outliers will influence the standard deviation. But since outlier is not part of this interquartile range, so no outlier will influence the interquartile range because outliers are outside Q1. Outliers are outside Q2. So. Increase in, for example, uh, uh, reliance uh, okay, somebody's income will not affect our median income, but it will affect our mean income, right? So, or so this graphical tool. Look, the box wage is gender equal to one. Box. 
look. These are the outliers. These are the outliers. This is Q1. This is Q1. This is Q3. This is the median. Okay. This is the range. And all these observations, this is our Q3. This is the median. This is the Q1. These are the outliers. Now let's let's have both of them together. So is there any way to find the outlier? Yeah, yeah. Outlier we can find out. I have given the, see, both the male, female, both have, we have given together. Look at the range. Look at the range of the male earning. Look at the range of the female earning. So this, even the median, median is here, median is here. Now let's see my education. Now, so it's well below, this is the median wage for the male worker, this is the median wage for the female workers. Now let's do it for both education and look, one graph here. So, now things have actually, there is no outlier here, secondary and secondary class, there, there, are, no, there are no outliers. One outlier, one has one, 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 one Yeah, yeah, the male, male, one outlier is there, yeah. Now this is the, this is the, I think this is the highest, yeah, 950, yeah, this is the highest 950, yeah. So these are very, uh, well, box plots are very powerful tools for graphically displaying uh, the distribution and uh, we'll explore the data a bit more after the break. Okay, so we'll stop now. Uh, you have, uh, can you come and see the internet? Uh, Minus 1.5 times into interquartile. Yeah. Outlier is any value which is greater than Q3 when third quartile plus 1.5 times into interquartile. These are the definitions of outlier. <laughs> What? Huh? <laughs>